In addition to the frequency having an effect on the different properties of the electromagnetic radiation, frequency is also going to have an effect on the different types of circuit analysis techniques that we're going to have to use to employ different calculations on the behavior of a uh, physical system or of an electrical circuit that utilizes electromagnetic radiation. So low frequency signals up to about 3 times 10 to the 7 hertz, we can use uh, what we call circuit analysis, which is what you already know, uh, techniques. And uh, this is more commonly called circuit theory. And hopefully you guys by now are well versed in circuit theory. This is uh, the techniques you've learned so far, and that's going to be primarily Kirchhoff's voltage law, uh, Kirchhoff's current law, and Ohm's law. And we will apply these in this class using circuit theory. And above 30 megahertz, greater than 30 megahertz, so that's 30 times 10 to the 6, 30 megahertz, so greater than 30 megahertz, um, basic circuit theory breaks down and we use different techniques depending on the frequency. We're going to use RF techniques. We're going to use um, microwave techniques. We're also going to use something called photonic techniques. And each of these techniques applies to a different portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. In this class, we will focus heavily on RF techniques here, and we will do a little bit about microwave techniques. We don't get into photonic techniques. That tends to be uh, the realm of physicists dealing with light. And um, what I want to do now is just kind of convince you of the need for electromagnetic analysis and explain to you real briefly why the circuit theory techniques break down in the electromagnetic spectrum, really. So when do different approaches need to be employed? So no matter what frequency of operation we're talking about, whether it's below 30 megahertz or above 30 megahertz, um, all electrical signals are carried through the propagation of an electromagnetic wave. Voltage and current waves, as you know them in conductors, are actually the propagation of EM waves in a conductor. So we say, you know, we, we say it's the movement of electrons through a conductor. Well, I hate to tell you this, but we've kind of been fibbing to you for several years. The, the electrons themselves aren't actually flowing. What they are doing is they are oscillating and they're creating electromagnetic waves that then transfer energy from one electron to the next electron through the, uh, through the, elect the metal structure. And so these electromagnetic waves are propagating either in free space or in your conductor. And uh, it takes some time for the signals to propagate through wires or through a communication channel or f through, f through free space. Unlike what we've told you in previous classes, it actually isn't instantaneous. So, for example, suppose I have a voltage source, a DC voltage source, and we are going to connect uh, uh, to a load resistor. So we've got a voltage source. Let's put some sort of switch on it. We'll close that switch at time t equals zero. And then we'll have some wires that then connect that to just a simple little resistor. So that's a circuit you're very, very familiar with. And you would normally analyze this with uh, Ohm's law. Well, it turns out that what we need to consider is that this electromagnetic wave that's propagating once the switch is closed and the voltage is applied to the wire, there's an electromagnetic wave that propagates over the length of the wire L. And um, it's going to take some time. And the time that it takes the electromagnetic wave to get from point A here to point B is going to be the length of the wire, which is measured in meters, divided by however fast that electromagnetic wave is traveling in this wire, which is in meters per second. So we see if we design, divide the length of the wire by the propagation velocity, meters divided by meters per second, we're left with some sort of time in seconds. And so what that is saying is that when this switch is closed, a voltage and current waveform will propagate from A to B, and it'll take a little bit of time. It takes some time. Most often we ignore these effects 
but they become more and more important at high frequencies. And uh, we use this concept that's called electrical length to kind of summarize this. An electrical length of a circuit, we don't have a symbol for it. We just abbreviate it capital E period L period. It's equal to the physical length of the wire divided by the wavelength of the electromagnetic uh, wave that's traveling in it. So let's take a one meter antenna. So the antenna is one meter in length, and let's say it's got a one kilohertz signal uh, applied to it. So we would take one meter, which is L, and we would divide it by uh, lambda, which we can calculate lambda if we know frequency, which it's just going to be mu sub p divided by um, f. So in this case, it's going to be uh, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by one kilohertz. So if we were to plug in three times 10 to the eighth, and we were to divide, we would have uh, uh, one, one K. The result of this mathematical operation is three times 10 to the minus six. So therefore, if you've never seen this symbol, the two squigglies, I use that a lot uh, to mean therefore. A one meter antenna is three times 10 to the minus six wavelengths long at a frequency of one kilohertz. So let's repeat that calculation for the same length antenna, but at a much higher frequency. So we'll do a, a one meter antenna. And this time, let's increase the frequency to something where it would um, matter, and we're going to go up to uh, megahertz in this case. So 1 times 10 to the 6 hertz, which is also a megahertz. And so the electrical length in this case is just equal to 1 meter divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by... Uh, one megahertz, and the result of that calculation is 0 0.3. And so we would say a one meter antenna at uh, a megahertz is 0 0.3 lambda long. And uh, what we will find in this class is, in general, and we'll prove this over the course, Lambda over 20, if the electrical length is less than lambda over 20, we call that electrically short. And electrically short circuits, we use circuit theory. So that's what you've done in your entire career here at Purdue so far. However, if the electrical length is greater than lambda over 20, we call it electrically long. And we have to res resort to these techniques down here. So it's not actually based on frequency. As I said earlier, it's actually based on the relationship between frequency and length of the circuit. So um, we'll prove all this mathematically so you'll understand it. Um, but just know that electromagnetics is not something new. It's actually something you've been using your entire time here at Purdue. We've just simplified its application because you've been working in this regime right here. And in this class, we're going to move into this brave new world of long, uh, electrically long circuits.